So is this mushroom magic? Let's find out. A magic mushroom made from a pom-pom and a little bit of needle felting. Shall we see how to make this? So I've always kind of loved the image of magic mushrooms. Fairyland, Alice in Wonderland, Super Mario Brothers. A little red capped with white spots mushroom is so iconic and probably had a massive feature in all of our childhoods when we were growing up. And a friend reminded me that I hadn't done much pom-pom art lately, so I decided to combine the two and while I was out walking my dogs, I had this idea for making this pom-pom mushroom. And I have to actually confess here, I just dreamt up the idea and then just did it live on camera to see if it would work. I haven't practiced this pattern, we just went with it and actually he's turned out super. So let's see how we did this. So the equipment you're going to need is some kind of a pom-pom maker. I used the large green pom-pom maker from the Fluffball Weaver set that I've reviewed in the cards up above. Also going to need red and white wool, a needle felting needle and a good pair of scissors. Again these are the Fishker scissors that I reviewed a few months back. I would totally recommend making sure you have a really good set of scissors or some people even use a scalpel carefully on their pom-poms. So first we're going to start with the cap of the mushroom. So onto your Fluffball Weaver pom-pom maker, first thing you're going to want to do is make three spots. Now bearing in mind that the first bits that you wind onto your pom-pom maker are going to be mirror images of each other. They're going to be the center line of this cap. So for example, they are this line down here. So to get these three spots, what you need to do is create a semicircle. And when you cut it in half, this will become a full, a full circle. So along the fluffball weaver, you want to make three humps, three semicircle shapes along the weaver. And this is just simply made by winding several layers onto the weaver and just focusing more in the center and just making it a smooth hump. The more you wind, the bigger the spots will be, the less you wind, the smaller the spots will be. And then we're wanting to fill in with some red. So with the red wool, you just want to cover the whole of everything in a few even layers. You want to make sure that you're covering the humps and also covering the valleys while at the state while at the same time making sure that you keep that humps and valleys shape because that'll make the next set of spots much easier. So once you've got several layers, so there's a bit of separation between your spots, you don't want them overlapping each other. So if this is your center layer, you've wound several layers, so there's a gap between these spots, and then we're going to wind two more spots into the valleys in the red that you've now got. And these have to be full circle, so this is why the valley's helpful, this gives you the bottom of the circle, and you're just going to be making the top exactly how you made the humps basically. So do your winding but focus mostly in the center so you get a hump basically. And then you're going to fill in the rest of that side with red wool until it's as firm, until it's as full as you can possibly get it. You want this nice and solid because this is going to be the cap of your mushroom. And now we're going to work on the underside of your mushroom. Really simple. On the other side of your pom pom maker, you're just going to fill that totally in with white. And that doesn't need to be quite as solidly filled in because this is going to be the stem, so it actually needs less fibres anyway. So fill it, but not totally pack it. And then join the two sides of your maker together seal off and now comes the cutting and now this is always the nerve-wracking exciting point cutting it you suddenly going to reveal your pattern did it work did it not are the spots showing up and chuffed as anything they've shown up and they've shown up in good spacing and it actually looks pretty much like how i'd pictured it in my head i've got a nice central spot and then spots all the way around totally happy that worked out perfectly. So you want to tie this off nice and firmly by taking some more wool, red or white, doesn't really matter, and running it through the gaps in the maker and tying it tightly several times. Basically you tie, flip over, tie again, flip over, do that a few times and tie it off in a good double or triple knot. It's okay because we're going to be felting into this, you don't need to add glue or anything because how we're felting it is going to end up securing it pretty well anyway. 
And now, surprisingly, the bit that is the most time consuming with this is getting the stalk, the stem of the mushroom. So we're going to start with this. What you want to be doing is separate out just one layer of the white and push that up into the red. And you're going to work around felting this kind of flat into the red to get a separation between the white and the red. And you've got these white bits are like the veins on the inside of the mushroom. I was told veins is the right word for it. Now this is a little bit fiddly, but be fairly rough with your mushroom. Really force the sides back and get right in there and felt right in at the centre of the mushroom. Felting the veins and the red back down and flat and the rest of the white up the way in the stalk of the mushroom. Really to get this nicely felted together, it's going to take you a good deal of time so don't hurry stick something on the tally obviously be careful at your fingers but I didn't feel that I needed a foam pad or anything because the mushroom's large enough that the needle's not going all the way through just careful with your fingers stab 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 for as long as it takes until it's holding together nicely and firmly in shape and you've got the bottom nice and firmly felted And then it's just time to trim the top. It, I find it much easier with these pom-poms to trim a little bit at a time and keep coming back rather than to try and take big chunks off. And you think, can think of what kind of shapes you want. The toadstool mushrooms tend to have a slight peak at the top and be slightly flatter, but trim it however you want. Just a little bit, snip, 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 all the way around. Make sure and not forget keeping it nicely circular. And the more you trim, the, the littler you make it, the neater the pattern's going to be because the tighter together each bit of wool is. You don't want to go too far, but keep trimming until you're happy with it. If your spots aren't quite as neat as you would like them to be, you can go in and separate all the white from the red and just gently felt them into a circular position and then carry on with your trim in a little bit. But a little bit of irregular, irregularity is kind of cute. And once you're happy with it, there you have your pom-pom mushroom. You can, if you need to, trim the base nice and flat. This will also be possible to actually needle felt into any kind of natural fibres if you wanted to attach it to anything. If you want to make this into a hanging ornament, you could attach some thread just now but when you were tying it off if you tied the thread towards the red side then you would have some wool to be able to hang him with as well so if you want to use them as an ornament that's something to consider also so i hope that was helpful i'm pam duffy and i'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic inspiration i make needle felting videos every wednesday and thursday wednesdays are often needle felting equipment and supplies review techniques of review and some things that don't fit in everywhere else so if you like that don't forget click on my wee face to subscribe check out the other videos in the pom-pom playlist and come back every Wednesday thank you so much